Today for your art lesson, you're going to be creating something called interactive art. Interactive art is artwork that you can play with. You have an effect on it. So today you are going to create some bubbles. So we're going to go ahead and start making this interactive art together. The supplies are really easy, but the big important thing that you need to make sure you have is a thicker piece of paper so that when you hold it up, it'll be nice and stiff and your bubbles can stay in place. All right, follow along with the video. I cannot wait to see what you create. Get them outside and blow some bubbles. Bye, friends. Here are the supplies you need. You need to have scissors, a pencil, a black Sharpie marker or any type of black marker. You might want an eraser and some tape, your markers and a thicker piece of white paper. You wanna make sure it's thicker. A piece of computer paper is not gonna hold up. So make sure you find something thicker. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start drawing my handle my wand that I am going to blow my bubbles from. So the first thing you need to think about is your nose. I know that sounds strange, but we want to map out where your nose is. That way your wand will fit right underneath it. So on the left side of the paper, I'm going to draw a nose coming off of my paper. Imagine your nose sticking out from the paper. So what is the shape of a nose from the side? it looks like a triangle. So I'm going to put a triangle towards the top on the left side. We are gonna cut this out. It does not matter if it looks like a real nose. This is just to help us know where our mouth is so that we can draw our wand. So I'm gonna start with my pencil and I'm gonna draw the letter C. I'm drawing a nice C underneath my nose. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm going to have it go all the way to the bottom of your paper. That's going to be the part that your hand holds on to. Now I want my wand to have depth. I want it to look like it's 3D. So I'm going to start back at the top of the C and I'm going to add a smaller C on the inside. It kind of reminds me of a moon, a crescent shape. Once I've done that, I'm going to make it on the other side. So now it connects and I'm just gonna follow my line down and then make that crescent shape on the other side. So that's going to be our wand, a C with an inside line a backward C and then your handle. Now it's time to draw your bubbles. So there's really no right or wrong way to draw a bubble. I'm gonna start at the top of my wand and I'm gonna kind of curl out. Then I'm gonna to go to the bottom and I'm gonna make sure that it connects back. That's gonna be the first bubble that is starting to be blown from your wand. Now you're just going to start adding circles. Now, if you would rather trace some circular objects like rolls of tape, um, marker caps to make these shapes, feel free to do that. I'm just gonna kind of freehand it, but all you're doing is adding a variety, which means different sizes, all around the edge of your paper. And you can even have them overlap like real bubbles do. So I'm making some really small, I'm making some bigger ones. I'm gonna make some that connect to each other. Just like that. I think I'm happy with what I have. So now I'm done with my pencil. I'm gonna grab my Sharpie and I'm just going to go over all of my lines and I'm trying my absolute hardest to stay on my pencil line. That way I don't have as much erasing to do when I'm done. And then don't forget the texture on your wand. When you look at uh, bubble wands, there's usually little lines around the edge. 
Now I'm just gonna trace over all my shapes. Now I'm going to grab that eraser and I'm going to go over all of the lines I missed because nobody's perfect and even Mrs. Gerdler doesn't trace perfectly. All right, now we're ready to add some color. Before we do that, you probably noticed I did not trace over my nose. I did that on purpose because I'm gonna be cutting it off and we're not even gonna be using it. That was just to help us know where our wand would go. All right, so now comes the fun part, our markers. Now the trick to making your um, bubbles look realistic is to add colorful curved lines to the edges of your bubbles. So notice I'm following the curve of the bubble. You want to be very careful not to color in your bubble. All I'm doing is using a lot of different colors to follow the edge of my bubbles. So even on the small ones, you're going to want to add some color. So now I'm just going to do that. I'm going to take a bunch of different colors and I'm just gonna start making some curved lines around each bubble. They can be next to each other. They can be on the opposite sides. If you wanna stick with a color family, maybe all your bubbles are cool colors or maybe they're all warm colors, that is your choice. Just make sure that you remember you are not coloring in your bubbles. You are making curved lines. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all my bubbles and you can start too. And then of course, don't forget to color in your stick for your bubbles as well. I think I'm gonna make mine orange. There you go. All right, so now we're gonna cut out our bubbles. So I am going to take my paper and I'm gonna cut around my bubbles, leaving a white edge. So when I start, I'm going to not cut on my black line. I'm going to cut next to it, and I'm going to have to rotate my paper and cut out all of my bubbles. This is also a great time if you have a bubble that you think just doesn't belong in your artwork, you can cut it out. Throw your scraps away. And now we're on the very last step to help it interactive so you can make it and you can hold it. We're going to tape a pencil to the back side. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna use a pencil, but you could use chopsticks. Um, you could use a colored pencil. The trick though is to make sure it's long. So a popsicle stick is gonna be a little too short. So I would recommend having something that goes almost to the top of your paper. So all I'm gonna do is lay my pencil there, get my tape, tape on my pencil and I'm actually going to do it this way so I don't poke myself when I'm interacting with my bubbles and I'm going to tape my pencil on my artwork. Now I can hold my bubbles and it'll look like I am blowing them and you have just created interactive art. <laughs> 